Okay, today we're going to be looking at painting an acrylic. You can see this image from the National Portrait Gallery uh, of a monochromatic acrylic painting. You can see the actual uh, way that the artist has used different types of black, white, greys to create the image there of, of a, a portrait. Uh, what we're trying to do is reciprocate that. Rembrandt, uh, Caravaggio all used monochromatic uh, areas in their work, although they used uh, oil paints. We're going to be looking at using acrylic, so we'll take this away here. And what we're going to do is focus in on one of the key paintings of a head. And first of all, I'm going to create a range in acrylic, uh, looking at putting the darkest tone here first, over here, and switching from the black to the lightest, which will go over here, put the white here, and then create mid-tone. Mixing the middle tones first, like so, and gradually going back to the white on this side. Just means you've got to be very careful in your kind of mixtures and the way you apply the paint. We're going to apply actually uh, our paint if we can. Possibly we're going to be applying our paint wet on wet today something different to what we were doing when we did our watercolours because with watercolours we had to let them dry so just taking away the black as we go across to this area here you can also adjust not going to get perfect first time around as you can see we've got a kind of slight range there and then going the other way adding more black to our mixtures and we'll get obviously stronger tones on this side. You can see more black. Makes a really nice uh, collection of tones here. So you can see the range that we've created there. Now, what we're going to do is after we've created that range, is to beam in and basically. Go right inside here and go up to the face and you can see we've kind of pre-prepared the drawing of the face and used various uh, various marks on there. Uh, what I'm going to do is just beam in and to look at some areas which are slightly darker. I'm going to have going around the top of the blocks there, around about here, and we're going to shade and look for which tones correspond to which, and I would say on here, this area here is slightly darker, obviously you can label the grid that you've produced, but at this level you should be able to beam and put dark areas here, we're going around following the blocks. As I say, we're going to paint wet on wet so we can again look here, following that block contour line. And the eye is slightly lighter. So I want to get a light tone in here, you can always check. This is following that area we've got there. What I'm going to do is, as Freud and a lot of the great artists would have done, they would have applied the tones and blocked them in. It's the thing with the acrylic, you can work on top, can you see here, like this, I'm following that form around. Here, and then this other part of the head will be slightly lighter, so we can again change the tone, follow that there, like that, so. And people like Freud, Rembrandt, would paint 
on the actual uh, painting over the oil or acrylic. It's produced these really, really nice responses here. We're going in there following those blocks you can see there. It's the point where we're going. Now look at creating a darker tone in here. Like so. And then you see that the other areas here require a lot more block form. As I say, if you get it slightly wrong, you can always add more acrylic paint. Acrylic has lots of PVA in so it's got really really good texture qualities and also it dries pretty quickly as well. Following, you see the arrows there following around with your brush. And as the nose is slightly lighter here at the top We'd have to follow those block forms that we've created with a, a lighter tone. You can see here. Building up those blocks. Here. You can see it's really robust. And the fact that you've created those uh, tonal blocks does help you to follow the actual three-dimensional form. Artists like Rembrandt, Freud would have known where these lines were, they wouldn't have to put blocks in, they would have had experience of doing so. But in our case it's, it's okay to use them. You can see the three-dimensional depth is beginning to appear. On the eye to the side here, it is slightly uh, darker, it's in the shade, so we'll follow that form around. Can you see here? and make it slightly darker than the first one that we produced and following the form there and because it's in the shade everything else in that particular area will be darker so again looking at following the block form around there see that the eyes are shaded in like so. So eventually you should really get rid of all the contour lines and work naturally, not use them as a, as a prop. Uh, the blocks that you've created but in this instance it's, it's really good just to to have them to hand so you can basically work the form out and you can see here I'm painting a little bit light areas here painting wet and wet see here And also you can see that there's a range of tone on here, all good monochromatic uh, paintings do show the range. And any highlights that are established would obviously have to be in in the white, or the first bracket that we, uh, lightest bracket we put down. And let's see, I'll go back here. You can see the gradual build up of the 320 form. Slightly lighter around here, following the contour lines, you can see. And 
that's a general way of using acrylic paint to create form using three-dimensional blocks.